Version 4 of the 3DGS render add-on finally turns Blender into a full Gaussian Splat editing and rendering suite. A lot of our existing functions, such as modifiers or color editing, are exactly the same as previous versions. So to save time, this won't be an extensive documentation video. I'll be introducing the core features of our new edit to render workflow to show you how I created this combat warrior scene. If you're new to the add-on, you can check the previous documentation playlist, but bear in mind that some now redundant features might be missing. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm here now in Blender 4.5. You can use some earlier versions of Blender, but I recommend the latest version. And you can find the add-on on the end panel here. If at any point when using the add-on, something doesn't look right or you're a bit confused, you can try toggling tips on or off and checking out the tips throughout the add-on here. From the edit mode and the import menu, I can import a new PLY as verts or as faces. If you know you want to do some vertex painting, you can import as faces but for performance and most situations, importing as verts is best. And we can see under here an option to create proxy object. With this turned on, you'll automatically create an empty proxy object that will be used for the high quality rendering. If I turn this on as it is by default and import a PLY, when I jump into render mode, I can see that the object is rendering in real time and can be manipulated in real time too. If you didn't have create proxy object enabled or you deleted the proxy empty object, when you go into render mode from the create sub panel, you can actually create a proxy from your active object. If I unhide my object and create proxy from active, I can see there it is. Just like old versions of the add-on, in edit mode, our object can be enabled, enabled to face the current view, disabled, or shown as a colored point cloud. In rendered mode, I can see that an empty object has been created, and this empty object can be scaled, rotated, and transformed like any normal object. If hide show objects on menu changes enabled, jumping between edit and rendered modes will hide the source object. But bear in mind for performance, this only affects vert imported objects. Face imported objects will be disabled in the viewport by default. If copy source transforms is enabled, the rendered object will copy the current location, scale, and rotation of the source object. If this is disabled, the empty's transforms will be entirely independent of the source. If at any point your scan is looking kind of fuzzy, or the background appears in front of the foreground, try moving the viewport camera with shift and middle mouse click. Here, I've imported a warrior woman scan, scanned by one of our users. I don't want the background points, so in edit mode, I use Blender's native selection tools to select and delete most of the background points. When I jump back into render mode, the updates are visible automatically. Any updates made to the object's color or animation with the add-on will also be visible in rendered mode. I can combine this scan with a background of another scan that was made by a Kiri Engine user. And when it comes time to render, I can jump to the render submenu in the render mode and I can select if I want to render a still frame or an animation. If I want to render just the color or also the depth pass. 
and in a moment I'll talk about combine with native render. I'll set my output file directory and after pressing render I can check the output folder to check the progress and here's our render. I can also include the Gaussian splat objects with mesh objects. I found this fantastic tank model on Sketchfab by the user Haider Al Asadi. I brought the tank into my scene and if I want to combine renders with Gaussian objects and mesh objects, I need to enable combine with native render. Now when I press render and I check my output directory, I can see a number of temp files being rendered. After these are finished rendering, our Gaussian splat scene will be composited together and we'll have a final output with the suffix composite including both our Gaussian splats and our mesh objects as a render. And by enabling render animation and combine with native render, we can end up with a result that looks like this.